This video is an excerpt of our Fall 2024 update video. This discusses the many world firsts that distry.org was able to accomplish over the summer of 2024. Thanks for watching. Our second dig this uh, spring and summer was at, in Montana again at Glendive in the Hell Creep. Um, we uh, spoke earlier of our finding of nematodes after uh, Kirsten Peterson's project. Uh, we dug many soil samples. Uh, one nematode was found and collected from soil samples. One nematode was also collected from the fruit trap method, which we discussed earlier. But we actually, uh, because of the uh, poor results we were getting from the soil and from the fruit, we decided to extract a freshly dug bone shard uh, from the location where the Triceratops horn was located and where other bones had been uh, collected from that site. We put that bone shard into a Bowerman funnel and waited a few hours and we actually collected a worm uh, that came out of that bone. And here's a nematode that was collected from a bone shard. This is another world first discovery. It's a preliminary discovery. We had dissecting microscopes with us at the dig to check our work with the Bowerman funnels, uh, but we had no attachment camera, so we were able to use this cell phone to videotape through the eyepiece, and you can clearly see this moving worm. This could have only come from the bone, which was thoroughly cleaned before it was placed in the funnel. And so this is a world first discovery, a living organism, a living nematode inside a dinosaur bone, uh, this was later identified by an expert at Virginia Tech as a fungal eating nematode, which is what we expect because we found so many fungal infestations deep within these bones. So this is a world first. It does need to be corroborated. Uh, more specimens need to be captured and sent to the experts uh, in Virginia uh, for identification, but we're very excited about this world first discovery. We need to corroborate this over and over again, which we intend to try to do. Uh, but after we filmed this phone cell video, I was able to uh, collect that nematode from our specimen container, put it into fixative, and uh, transported it back to the distri lab where we were able to photograph it under high magnification uh, using optical staining methods like Nomarski, as you see here. And uh, this was identified by a scientist, a PhD scientist at Virginia Tech. He identified it as from the Apelichida, uh, I guess that's the way it's pronounced, Apelichida, and that's a fung fungiferous or fungus-eating nematode, which is what we expected based on our discovery of fungal fibers, fungal hyphae growing throughout these bones, particularly in Montosaurus. And so uh, we're very excited about this identification of a fungiferous worm, a fungus eating worm. And uh, so much more work has to be done on this. But this is another world first that we're really excited about. And uh, we're hoping to uh, capitalize on this as well. We're also finding uh, very interestingly tiny insect remains, microscopic jaws, uh, and also bodies, complete bodies and other uh, insect parts in our decalcification solutions. And so we know that insects are entering these bones, even tiny, tiny ones are getting in there and predating upon the uh, soft tissue and fungus and bacteria that are living inside of these bones. And so that's another world first. We can't find any examples of insect parts uh, in the literature in dinosaur bones. There are quite a few papers on the uh, activities of uh, insects and other organisms on these bones and the, and the way they leave the remains with burrowing uh, tunnels and uh, jaw marks and things like that. But we've never seen anything in the literature that shows insect jaws and full bodies of insects. So we think that's another world first. When we went to the Microscopy Site of America meeting this summer in Cleveland, we took along a type nerve, this Cretaceous nerve, that shows what nerves should look like. You can see this beautiful crosshatch pattern all up and down. We had put this in osmium for quite some time, and it produced a fascinating result. You can see these, this line of lipid droplets 
that was squeezed out of the nerve when we put it on the slide. But that changed over time. Every time we photographed it after a few days, those lipid droplets coalesced together and they made larger blebs as time went on and eventually it turned into one bubble that moved completely across the slide and you can see remnants of it in the lower left corner here. So the lipids are fascinating to us and we used another novel way at the microscopy meeting to look at these lipids and show their shape and presence along the nerve fiber. When we attended the Microscopy Site of America meeting, we went to the Leica booth and we used their confocal microscope, which is a laser-based microscope. It uses unique wavelengths to point at your specimen. Now you can see the thinness of the specimen because it was compressed when we put it under the slide pressure, and that means it was malleable before we even put it on a slide. But you can also see the crosshatch very clearly on both sides of this nerve. And also, you can see color differences, and these are a result of the lasers that are used. Uh, they have a piece of software that can determine the density of different materials in the nerve. And so we asked them, can you strip away the collagen and show us just the nerve blobs inside of the nerve? And so with their software, they were able to peel away the density of the collagen, which shows up because of the lasers, stripping that all away and showing those lipid droplets uh, present along the whole length of this nerve. So this is a very exciting finding.